Hi there, welcome to BI Consulting Pro. This is part 2 of our series Power BI Interview Question and Answers for the Beginners. In this video, you will get to know all the question and answers that you may encounter while appearing for your Power BI interview. Meanwhile, if you have any concern or any questions, please don't forget to connect with us. Also, if you have any feedback for us, please don't hesitate to share with us and we will try our best to follow your feedback. Enough all the talking, let's get started. Hi there, please fasten your seat belts because now we are going to discuss Power BI interview questions for the beginners part 2. And in this, the very first question can be asked is what is get data in Power BI? If you are working on Power BI or if you have just started working on Power BI, then this is the very basic step that you should be aware about. In Power BI, we can get data from a lot of different sources, whether it's your Excel, your database, or maybe it's coming from the web. Then you can ingest the data from these different sources into Power BI and then you can generate your reports and dashboards on the basis of that. However, what is get data? So get data is the option under the menu. If you can see on your screen, now you would get to know that get data can give you a bunch of options. That means whether you can get the data from Excel, SQL Server, CSV, Web, or Data Feed, etc which are going to help you to get the data from the different sources or the source that you are going to use to create your Power BI reports or dashboards. If you would click on more, then you would see the different categories of data sources. For example, whether you want to just get the data from file, database, Power Platform, Azure, online services or other. Now, the second question comes, what are advantages of Power BI? Or in another terms, your interviewer can ask you, why should you use Power BI? Let me tell you a couple of advantages of Power BI that you can tell your interviewer while appearing for the interview that is going to convince him or her that we should use Power BI. The very first is going to be it helps build an intractable data visualization in data centers. With the help of Power BI, you can ingest data in Power BI from hundreds of data sources. And that is going to be very interactable. You can interact with your visualizations through the slicers or through click and go through options. Or if you want to generate more insights, you can also do that. It has user friendly user interface. Whenever you are working with Power BI, whether you are a technical person or a non-technical person, you would find it very easy to learn. And not only that, its user interface is very similar to Excel or PowerPoint. Most of us are already using Microsoft Office Suits in our offices in our day-to-day -day life. So if you have already used Microsoft Excel or Microsoft PowerPoint, then you are going to find its interface very much similar to that. It also allows users to transform data into visuals and share them with anyone. However, please note that there are certain conditions apply when you have to share your reports and dashboard with the other users. It establishes a connection for Excel queries and dashboards for fast analysis. You can directly download your data into Excel and you can start analyzing over there too. It provides quick and accurate solutions. You can generate insights from any raw data. You just need to load the data into Power BI file and then just upload it on Power BI service. Over there, you can find all the insights from that data. You don't need to use any code. You don't need to use Python or R or SQL. You can directly generate insights using AI system developed by Microsoft Power BI team. It also enables users to perform queries on reports using simple English words. Now let's move forward. Here, your interviewer can ask you list out some drawbacks or limitations of using Power BI. Well guys, none of the tool in the market is perfect. Every tool has their own limitations. So does Power BI. A couple of them have been listed over here on your screen, which you can read and I'm going to let you know what are these. The very first comes, Power BI does not accept file size larger than 1 GB and does not mix imported data accessed from real-time connections. However, there are workarounds which you can do and also you can make Power BI file with the large data if you are using the Power BI Premium. There are very few data sources that allow real-time connections to the Power BI reports and dashboards. So you have to always keep in mind when you are working with Power BI and you have to create real-time reports and dashboard that what are the data sources that are being spotted while working with Power BI. 
Next to that, if you are not using premium capacity, each user must have their own license to consume reports and dashboards. Also, please keep in your mind, when you develop a dashboard or report, dashboard doesn't accept or pass user, account or other entity parameter by the end user. And lastly, you should also remember that Microsoft Power BI Desktop App is only available for Windows. You cannot use Microsoft Power BI Desktop App for iOS, that means your MacBook or Linux operating system. Next, what are some differences in data modeling between Power BI Desktop and Power Pivot for Excel? This is a very interesting question. Over here, you should note that Power Pivot for Excel supports only single directional relationships, that means one too many calculated column and one import mode only. However, Microsoft Power BI Desktop supports bidirectional cross filtering connections, security, calculated table and multiple import options. If you would like to know more about the relationships, about the data modeling concepts, how to do it, what are the different schemas are available, etc. Then I have already created one dedicated video for data modeling. I'm going to provide you a link in the description section or you can also find somewhere above with the i button so please don't forget to check it out next what are the different connectivity modes in power bi the very first over here is the import mode this is a very basic mode but it is one of the fastest mode why i'm saying basic because in this one we are going to get all the data from a data source into our power bi file however we have to always keep in our mind that there is a limit of the data size that one power bi file can handle Additionally, you should also know that while data is coming to the Power BI file, it gets compressed up to 9 to 10 times. That means if your data outside Microsoft Power BI file, that is .pbx file, is about 10 GB. So when you're going to get the data into Microsoft Power BI file, that is your .pbx file, then it's going to compress up to 1 GB. Second would be the direct query. The direct query connection type is only available when you connect to a specific data sources. That means with the data sources and only certain data sources are going to support it with this. In this connectivity type, Power BI will only store the metadata of underlying data and not the actual data. Next would be the live connection. With this connectivity type, it does not store data in Power BI model. All interactions with the report using live connection will directly query the existing analysis service model. For example, your SQL Server analysis model or Azure analysis service model. There are only three data sources that support the live connection method. Number one is going to be your SQL Server analysis services, which are going to be Tableau models and multidimensional cubes. Second would be Azure analysis services, Tableau models. And last one would be the Power BI datasets hosted in Power BI services. Last one is a different one. Basically, with this mode, you can combine data from multiple sources. For example, you can combine data from Azure Analysis Services and SQL Server DB. Next to that is going to be the what are the various types of refresh options provided in Microsoft Power BI. Over here, you should remember that we can do the scheduled refresh in Power BI. That means on a particular day or particular time, you want to refresh your data, you can do that. And that is going to be the automated refresh in Microsoft Power BI service. Another one is the incremental refresh. For example, you have data of last 10 years, but your data is going to change only in last one month. So in that case, how are you supposed to refresh your data? If you are going to refresh the whole data, it's going to take days because your data is of last 10 years. So in that case, we can set up the incremental refresh. It is a very advanced concept. But if you would like to know more, I'm going to provide you a link in the description section for the incremental refresh where I have created one dedicated video for that. Please go and check that out. Now let's have a look what are the different kinds of refreshes available in Power BI. The very first over here is the package refresh. This refresh is going to synchronize your Power BI desktop or Excel file between the Power BI service and OneDrive or maybe SharePoint Online. Second would be your model or data refresh. This refreshes the data set within the Power BI service with data from original data source. Next would be your tile refresh. This updates the cache for tile visuals every 15 minutes on the dashboard once the data changes. And last one would be the visual container refresh. This refreshes the visual container and updates the cached report visuals within a report once the data changes. So these are the different kinds of refreshes that you would get in Power BI. However, 
there's also one very advanced concept which I'm gonna cover in a separate video and I'm gonna publish that video very soon so please stay tuned with us and you can ask you any related question over there so this is going to be authoring reports with automatic page refresh in Power BI Desktop suppose you want to refresh your report after every 10 seconds or maybe you want to refresh your reports after every five minutes that means if you want to get some real-time data refresh into your reports or dashboards then how can you do that well automatic page refresh is available for direct query sources and some live connection scenarios too so it will only be available when you are connected to a spotted data source so you have to go on that particular page where you would like to set up this kind of refresh and then you have to go to the format pane when you would see a page refresh at the bottom of your format pane you just need to switch it on by default it is of 30 minutes however if i'm not wrong it can go up to one second so one second is a very very less amount of time and you are going to get almost the real time data refresh over there let's move next name the data sources power bi can connect to well power bi can connect hundreds of data sources so let's see how power bi can connect Several data sources can be connected to Power BI, which is grouped into three main types. The very first is going to be your files. Files can import data from Excel, Power BI desktop files and CSV files. Then next is going to be the content packs. Content packs are collection of related documents or files stored as a group, which are further going to be divided into two types. The first is going to be the content packs from service providers like Google Analytics, Marketo or Salesforce that you can directly get it from Microsoft Power BI services. Second is the content packs are created and shared by other users in your organization. And the last one, that is the third one, is gonna be the connectors, which are gonna help you to connect your database and data sets with apps, services, and data in the cloud. Let's move forward. And now discuss the very important question that generally every interviewer is gonna ask you if you are appearing for a Power BI interview for beginners. What is the dashboard in Power BI? In my experience, in most of the organizations, people pronounce all of their reports as dashboards. But please trust me, report and dashboards are both different things. So let's see what is the dashboard actually in Power BI. A Power BI dashboard is a single page, often called a canvas, that tells a story through visualizations. Because it's limited to one page, a well-designed dashboard contains only the highlights of that story. Readers can view related reports for the details. Dashboards are a feature of the Power BI service only. You should always remember that you cannot create a dashboard in your Power BI desktop app. You can only create Power BI dashboard in Microsoft Power BI services. Next to that is explain how relationships are defined in Microsoft Power BI desktop app. Well, if you have started working on Microsoft Power BI, then you know that how to create a model into Microsoft Power BI. If not, then you need to learn it because without that, you cannot use Microsoft Power BI. You can create automated relationships as well, or you can also change them manually. So it's totally up to you. If you are a beginner, then you can use the automatic relationships in Power BI, which Microsoft Power BI is automatically going to define while loading the data into Microsoft Power BI desktop app. Or if you are an experienced person, then you can define all the relationships manually. Let's move forward. Related to that previous question, your interviewer can also ask you, can you have more than one functional relationship between two tables in a Power Pivot data model or Microsoft Power BI data model? Your answer is going to be no, because at a time you can only have one active relationship. So what is active relationship and what is not active relationship? That is a question that you need to focus on. Active relationship you can use while slicing and dicing the data or when you have to get the data from the different table in Microsoft Power BI. However, inactive relationship plays a crucial role too, because whenever you are defining some of the calculation, then you can utilize this relationship using some of the DEX functions to create measures and analyze the data. Can you have a table in the model which does not have any relationship with other tables? Or your interviewer can also ask you what is a disconnected table in a data model? Guys, whenever you are working with Power BI data modeling, then you should keep in your mind that there are certain situations 
where you have to populate some of the measures or some of the calculations dynamically. In those kind of scenarios, we can use the disconnected table. Basically, a disconnected table is same as your other table. However, this won't have any relationship with other tables present in that data model. Last question can be, what is the calculate function index? Since this interview is going to be for the Power BI beginners, so they are not going to ask a lot of questions on DAX. But your interviewer can ask you a couple of questions from the DAX just to check why do we use DAX and what is its importance while working with Power BI. So let me explain you what is a calculate function. Calculate function is going to evaluate an expression in a modify filter context. Over here, you can see in white text, what is the syntax for this? So first you have to write calculate dex function. You have to write your, then your expression. For example, you can write sum of sales amount. That means you are gonna get the total sales amount and then you can apply your filter. For example, in the example at the bottom of your screen, you can see that I'm first writing calculate, then sum sales amount. That means I'm getting total sales amount and then I'm filtering it by the order date key where I'm only getting the sales of the maximum order date key that is available in my data. If you would like to know more about DAX, then I have created a separate video on DAX tutorial. I'm going to provide you a link in the description section, so please don't forget to check it out. In our next video, we are going to discuss Power BI Intro questions for intermediate levels, so please stay tuned for the next video. If you have any training and consultation requirement, please don't forget to connect with us. And also, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest Power BI videos and updates. See you in the next video.